So you mentioned TikTok as as um, an acquisition channel, and it it kind of made sense when you were talking about the first version of the product and kind of being very consumer focused and you know people doing weddings and whatever. But is TikTok still a, a growth channel for for you today with the with the product as it is? Yeah. So this is actually funny because we um, have experimented with a bunch of different. So what, okay, so what happened initially was we um, were monitoring our traffic and we had this crazy spike in traffic and we realized, oh, wow, we went viral on TikTok. We said, oh, well, what if we can manufacture that? So, you know, influencer marketing, we got some influencers and we realized, wow, like this works, but it's really labor intensive to just be finding, reaching out to a bunch of influencers, negotiating with them, signing them up, getting them papered getting them to create the content that we want, inspecting that, post, getting them to post that content, following up, and then you know paying people, right? And so we were like, wow, we don't, we actually need some tooling to do this. And so we, um, not one of our portfolio companies that charge is called Grin, and they're a CRM for influencer marketing that basically helps that whole process that I just described. So we started using them and we were able to scale up our influencer marketing from you know, maybe five posts a month to I think at one point we're doing 60 or 70 with, you know, one person managing it. And um, what what we realized is we had tried advertising, you know, on LinkedIn and LinkedIn ads, and that's where you would think about doing marketing. But what we, what we realized is that everyone's on TikTok. Like, it's the same people. The same people are using TikTok and LinkedIn. It's just the only difference is that buying that, getting in front of that person on TikTok is a 10th of the cost as it is on LinkedIn, right? And so, you know, we had all these prospective customers, CEOs of, you know, SMBs and startups and VPs at big companies. And they were saying, you know, we're saying, where do you find us? And they'd say, oh, they're you know, on social media. But they didn't want to, they didn't want to say TikTok, but they were on TikTok. And so we realized it's like, well, if you can just create content for that audit person on TikTok, you know, you it's I, I think we think of it as like B to C to B to B to C to B marketing, right? Like you get in front of that consumer and then they bring you into their business. And so that's I think something that a lot of we're coaching a lot of our uh, portfolio companies in charge on how to use that technique. I think it's pretty effective. Okay, so two questions about that. That's like super interesting. Number one is like, what type of content were you creating that actually worked on TikTok? It's going to be very different to the kind of thing that I imagine you would you would try on LinkedIn. And secondly, how do you target these people? Like on LinkedIn, it's pretty easy, right? You can target by company, by job, by whatever. But how do you do that on TikTok? So it's funny. It's kind of like the answer is the other question. So I'll do the latter first. So you don't need – so you target by based on the content that you create. So you create work content, you create interesting content about work or, you know, because if you're a professional, you know, you can laugh at a, a joke about the office or about your Zoom culture, uh, you know, anywhere, right? Like it's just uh, black humor for a lot of us uh, desk jockeys. And so we would create, you know, content with people with, with about, you know, working about the ridiculousness of it, or, or all just about the productivity of Kumo Space, or about it as an alternative to being in the Brady Bunch box of Zoom. So we would just create that content, and it's nice because Kumo Space is a video chat product that's a big part of our our product. And so the video nature of our product showed really well on TikTok, right? Because it's it's a video medium and we have a video product if i told you what a virtual office is it's pretty hard you're like what is a virtual office i don't know but i can show you on video very easily so there was a very nice product channel fit right i don't think people think about that enough which is like okay what is the right channel that my product shows off its best attributes in? And so we're a video-based product that's an advantage over us google space is far more interesting and engaging product than most SaaS products. Most SaaS products probably wouldn't show well on video, right? But Kumo Space does. So it was a way for us to actually express the product way better than we could in a sales call or, or in an email. So I think there's a great product channel fit there. 
And then in terms of targeting, that's the nice part about TikTok, right? Because everyone's like, oh, you know, do you have to have the right influencers or do you, you know, get the right audience? Well, that's not how TikTok works, actually. TikTok works by having a, the For You page, which is perfectly algorithmically generated. And it's based on what that type of content that user likes, right? So if the user is engaging with work or focused content, right? TikTok will get our work focused content if it's good in front of them. We don't have to worry about that. I didn't realize that. So it's in, in many ways, it's like what you just said at the start of this. It's like the targeting is really about creating the right type of content and just letting the algorithm take care of the rest. It's, it's very counterintuitive because I think a lot of people my age, right? You know, millennials, they are so stuck in this like social network kind of mindset. And they're like, oh, it's about, you know, their followers and who their fan, you know, who their followers and their fans. Like, well, TikTok doesn't care. 